Welcome to this Easy Composites guide to cutting, shaping and finishing carbon fibre sheet and carbon fibre parts. The idea of this tutorial is to cover some important safety information and also explain the best techniques for cutting this material and then shaping and finishing the cut edges. This guide should provide useful information to anyone who needs to cut and finish carbon fibre parts, whether they are untrimmed original parts like this, uh, stock carbon fibre sheet material uh, like this that you're going to cut to make profile parts, or uh, like this, could be a seat post or handlebars that you just need to cut in order to adjust it. This tutorial is made up of the following sections. Firstly, an explanation as to what carbon fibre parts are made from, some important safety information when cutting carbon fibre, tools and techniques for cutting, and then the best tools and techniques for uh, finishing cut edges. And then finally, we'll look at protection for cut edges. If you're unfamiliar with carbon fibre, it's useful to understand what this material is before you start working with it. Carbon fibre parts are actually carbon fibre reinforced plastic, which is to say that they're a composite material made from a plastic, i.e. a cured resin, which starts off life like this, and then carbon fibre reinforcement, which looks like this. It's important to understand this because both the resin and the carbon fibres uh, create their own risks and also considerations uh, when working with the cured composite. When cutting or shaping carbon fibre parts, it's important to follow some good safety practices. If you do so, then cutting this material can be made perfectly safe. The weight of evidence to date from studies specifically into the dangers of working with carbon fibre overwhelmingly suggests that it presents similar risks and so should be protected against in a similar way to working with other dense materials like hardwood or fibreglass. In addition, some resin systems may produce toxic smoke when cut using high-speed machines. The main risks are irritation to your skin, eyes and lungs caused by the fine dust particles and also danger from splinters and sharp edges of the cut laminate. If you're using high speed cutting tools then obviously there's the risks associated with those machines. One final risk comes from the fact that carbon fibre dust is electrically conductive, although in practice this is more of a danger to your equipment uh, rather than yourself. All risks and irritation from working with carbon fibre can be significantly reduced by working in a well-ventilated environment and ideally with some localised extraction. In a workshop environment, that might mean working with a positionable extraction arm like this, or even working on a downdraft table like this. Now these will draw uh, dust down into the filter uh, before it even gets a chance to become airborne. But if you're working at home or you're doing more infrequent jobs, then uh, something as simple as a vacuum cleaner like this, uh, positioned on the table as near to where you're working as possible, uh, will do the same thing and suck up dust as it's being created. Carbon fibre dust itself is not toxic. However, fine particles of it can irritate your lungs in the same way that cutting materials like hardwood can. The plastic element of carbon fibre parts is most commonly a thermoset resin, such as epoxy, polyester or vinyl ester. And of these, epoxy resin specifically can produce toxic dust when cut using high speed equipment. And because it's often so difficult to know which resin system has been used in the manufacture of a part, we would always suggest assuming that high speed cutting could create hazardous or toxic dust and so take appropriate precautions. To safeguard against both risks, as well as extraction or good ventilation, we always suggest wearing a respirator uh, when cutting carbon fibre. So let's take a look at the different types of respirator that are available. We suggest avoiding uh, disposable nuisance masks like this. Uh, they don't really have any uh, sort of guaranteed protection factor at all um, and, uh, and don't offer a good level of fit either. Instead, for occasional use, a P1 mask like this is a good starting point. For improved protection, a P2 dust mask like this filters out finer dust particles and a valved example like this one is much more comfortable to wear for longer periods of time. For prolonged or regular use, you might want to look into a reusable respirator like this one. These tend to offer much better fit, ensuring that dust can't find its way around the mask. Again, look for a P2 stamp or even a P3 rating, uh, which safeguards against higher toxicity materials. The next safety consideration is your skin. There's two risks to your skin when trimming carbon fiber parts. The first being cuts from the sharp edges and the second from irritation uh, caused by the fine dust. If you're cutting down um, ready-made carbon fiber parts like this, uh, which could be a seat post for example, then you're very unlikely to encounter any sharp or dangerous edges. Uh, but if you're trimming uh, freshly demolded carbon fiber parts like this, then exercise great caution. Uh, because the edges of the laminate where, it's been, uh, where it goes thin uh, can be absolutely razor sharp and give you a nasty cut. 
Skin irritation from fine dust particles is very common when cutting or sanding carbon fibre. This irritation is most likely to affect your hands, particularly in between your fingers, and also your forearms. Thin surgical gloves like these can be worn to keep the dust off your skin, uh, but for heavier trimming operations we would always generally opt for a disposable full suit as well. If you do get carbon fibre dust on your skin, then wash it off with cold water and not warm water or hot water. This will avoid opening your pores and making the irritation worse. The last piece of safety equipment we would recommend is eye protection. If you're only fettling or making small adjustments to a carbon fibre part by hand, then there's very little risk to your eyes. But for heavier cutting or power tool use, then safety glasses like these uh, offer a good basic level of protection. Or alternatively, uh, for heavier trimming operations, uh, then a set of goggles like this is recommended. There's nothing particularly difficult or unique about cutting carbon fibre. Many people assume that it cannot be done without expensive or specialist tools, but this is not the case. Better, more appropriate tools will make things quicker and easier, but if you're careful and you go about it the right way, you can certainly cut carbon fibre with fairly standard tools. As a general rule, when cutting carbon fibre, you want the cutting surface of the tool that you're using to be as fine as possible. A finer cutting surface will splinter and fracture the laminate much less than a coarser cutting surface. This means that the best blades to use don't in fact have teeth at all. Instead, they have a fine grit on their cutting edge, like this permagrit hacksaw blade, or like this slitting disc, which is made of a ceramic material, which always gives it an abrasive surface at its cutting edge. If you don't have a cutting tool with an abrasive edge, then you can still use tooth blades, but you'll find that they may chip and splinter the laminate more when cutting. If you do use a blade with teeth, then you want the teeth to be as fine as possible. This means using blades designed for metal rather than those designed for wood in tools like hacksaws and jigsaw blades. In all cases, when you cut carbon fibre, you should always cut wide of the mark. Uh, compared to exactly where the finished line should be, uh, you'll cut a bit past that so that you can rub it back using a sanding block or abrasive paper. In doing so, if there's been any chipping or splintering of the laminate during the cutting process, then this can be rubbed away, leaving a smooth and accurate edge, which we'll demonstrate after. So let's now take a look at how a range of different tools uh, cut a range of different types of carbon fibre material. So we've got a good spread of different types of material, including an easy to cut foam core panel, some solid pre-preg carbon fibre sheet, a laminated part, a pultrusion, uh, and the seat post to cut down and then a range of tools. Some of them are more appropriate for cutting different types of material than others, uh, but we'll work our way through and demonstrate which ones are better and what sort of cut you can expect. So because we're on to the actual cutting of the carbon fibre now, uh, we need to pay attention to our safety gear. So we've got respirator and goggles, and then we're just going to use a cutting surface so that we can hold the materials and be able to saw off the edge into space uh, over this downdraft table. So we use a piece of foam for that. Here's the various bits and pieces that we're going to be doing the cutting demonstration on. We'll just put the seat post and the part to one side and concentrate first of all on these two sheets. So start by just marking out a simple shape. Of course this is only for demonstration purposes so uh, we're not paying any particular attention to the measurements or the shape or, or accurately marking these out. First of all we've got the pre-preg sheet. This is pure carbon fibre, two millimetres thick and we're going to be cutting it first of all using a hacksaw, so a normal hacksaw with a metal cutting blade in. Just starting off gently along the cut, the metal cutting blade actually does a really nice job on a pre-preg sheet like this. It wouldn't be as good if we'd got uh, corners to get round or, or a tight shape to follow particularly, uh, but for straight lines like this and you can see the uh, metal cutting blade making very light work and a nice smooth cut on this pre-preg sheet. So looking at the cut edge on this one now, you can clearly see that's done quite a nice job. There's really very little finishing. We've cut a little bit wider of the mark like we said we would, and we can rub that back later using a block. Moving on now to the next tool, we're using a Dremel. Now this is a FortiFlex Dremel, so it has the motor remoted and then a flexible shaft, making it very easy and lightweight to handle. And we've got a Permagrit tungsten carbide abrasive wheel in the, uh, in the Dremel. Now this is probably the most professional way uh, to trim carbon fibre parts so if you're doing it regularly on our manufacturing side uh, this is the way that we would be trimming uh, all manner of uh, complicated shapes and as you can see the permagrit wheel makes extremely light work of this rigid pre-preg sheet 
and we've just cut wider the mark again so that we can tidy up these edges afterwards. To be honest, you can probably go closer than that with the Dremel and a good level of accuracy. So, sticking with the solid 2mm prepreg sheet, we're going to demonstrate a way that you can use a hand tool uh, to take out this middle detail instead of the Dremel that we've just shown you. So, first of all, we need to drill a hole through the sheet so that we can get the rod saw into that centre detail section. So, we're using a perfectly normal rechargeable drill here, and the drill bit again is perfectly normal metal working drill bit. Now we're going to leave this to show you all the way through the drilling process. It does take a bit of time but this does demonstrate that a normal drill bit will will drill through prepreg sheet like this uh, without too much difficulty. We'd probably choose to use a pedestal drill to make slightly lighter work of this but normal hand tools like this will do the job. And that's just going to leave us with a slight amount of burring around the hole. If we take a look at the other side as well, again, just a bit of burring. So if we were trying to drill really neat holes rather than just opening up a hole for the tool, then we'd file that back to tidy up the edges. So opening up the rod saw now so that we can thread it through the hole that we've just created and allow us to cut out this center section and then just latch that back into this. Now these permagrit rod saw files, fantastic for quite detailed shapes, getting inside of, uh, of cuts like this. They do make reasonably slow progress. You've got quite a few mil of cut and that obviously slows things down, but you will get there in the end. So they are a useful tool to have in your collection uh, for detailed like this, if you're cutting switches out of a panel and you can obviously get in and tidy up all these edges. Now, the nature of the rod saw means that we've got a slightly wobbly edge, particularly one's a little bit smoother than the other depending on how difficult it was to get a position on the sheet while we were cutting it. This edge has got a bit of wobble on, but we're going to take that off later using a file and smooth up that edge. So in marked contrast now to the hand cutting that we've just been doing with the rod saw, we'll get on a good quality mask and safety goggles for this one because we're demonstrating using an angle grinder with a slitting disc in to cut this solid 2 mil prepreg carbon fibre sheet. Now, an angle grinder like this will make extremely light work of even the thickest solid carbon fibre laminates. It really needs to be straight line to cutting. It's not much use for detailed or curved surfaces, so trimming complicated parts is out, but for, uh, for straight cuts like this, this really is a fantastic tool. You need to exercise care because it's, it's a powerful tool, but it does cut very quickly and leaves you with a very smooth edge with no burring at all. So for our next demonstration, we're going to be using foam core carbon fiber panel. Now this is a single layer of carbon fiber either side of a structural close cell PVC foam. And we've got a gel coat on the panel as well, which makes things interesting in terms of chipping at the laminate. Now, because of the foam core construction, as you can see, the drill makes much lighter work as will the other tools, but it does leave this uh, chipping and fraying on the edges. So we're going to demonstrate a range of different jigsaw blades in the jigsaw cutter, starting with the most appropriate, which is a permagrit tungsten carbide gritty blade. So it doesn't have teeth. Instead, it has a, this tungsten carbide gritted surface. Now that stops any chipping and fracturing of the laminate and allows us, even on this foam core panel, which as we say, has got the gel coat, which would be prone to uh, chipping and, de and delaminating. And we can cut that very nicely. So moving on, to a metal cutting blade. This is slightly less appropriate, but will still make a decent job of, uh, of the cutting. Now, a metal cutting blade has got much finer teeth than a wood cutting blade, and so that means that when we cut, although there is a small amount of uh, chipping that happens, it's uh, kept to a minimum. And on a, a solid carbon fiber laminate, you probably see very little chipping at all. So moving on finally to the third type of blade, this is a wood cutting blade and not one that we would recommend, although we will demonstrate it. And if you wanted, you can still cut carbon fiber laminate with a wood cutting blade, although it will chip and fracture at the laminate significantly more. And certainly on this foam core panel where we've got the gel coat, that's going to cause problems. So looking closely at it now, you can see the size of the chips that are being taken out of the laminate. It makes quick progress, but it's really not, not the ideal cutting blade at all and you can see the, the fractures making quite a jaggedy edge. So if we compare the inside cut on this piece that was done with the permagrit blade, then we've got the outside edge on this one was cut with the metal cutting blade. There's just some small fracturing there. 
and then finally if we look at this edge which was cut with the wood cutting blade you can see a lot of chipping and a lot of fracturing down that edge. Now we've demonstrated there using a jigsaw to make straight cuts but of course one of the main advantages to using a jigsaw is the fact that it can make a very nice job of curved profiled or detailed sections like this and so there's certainly a place for using a jigsaw particularly with the right blade in like the permagrit and it'll still leave you with a nice edge on a cut laminate like this. So earlier we demonstrated how effective the Dremel with a tungsten carbide wheel could be when cutting solid carbon fibre sheet laminate. Well it's even more effective when you're cutting contoured shapes like this uh, actual carbon fibre part where you've got a detailed edge to trim to and, uh, and quite a sort of 3D shape to the part. So we'll demonstrate now just how close we would typically cut when trimming a part like this uh, with a steady hand and sort of using the thumb as a guide on the part itself we can be within a fraction of a millimetre of the finished trim line and that of course leaves us with much less uh, finishing and fettling to do on the parts. Dremel like this making very light work of things like the slot that needs cutting at the top of this vent and if you look at the finished edge that we've got there's really very little fettling to do afterwards I'd say just a fraction of a millimetre to take off this part. So next we'll demonstrate cutting some pultruded carbon fibre tube. Now because of the fibre orientation running lengthways, all the fibres running lengthways down the tube, this does pose some interesting problems when cutting. So if we just demonstrate using the angle grinder with the slitting disc on this pultruded tube, to make a fairly careful cut through, you'll see that because all of the fibres are, are running lengthways down the tube, they're very much prone to fracturing. So one solution to this is to rotate the tube so that the slitting disc is always cutting down on the fibre, down through the material, rather than uh, potentially splintering off at the bottom. So if you take a look at that cut compared to the one earlier, you can see that's much smoother and cleaner. So following the same principle using hand tools, if we just mark up this tube, Using a hacksaw, what we do is we cut a small incision all the way around, breaking the fibres at the outside of the tube, keep rotating with the hacksaw, and then finally, once we've gone all the way around, uh, we drop down gently with the blade. By cutting in this way, when we pull off the masking tape, you can see that we've got a perfect finish, and we've eliminated any danger of splintering or fracturing the pultruded tube. Another example of where we might want to use this technique is cutting down this carbon fibre seat post. Now, a bike seat post like this, again, makes use predominantly of unidirectional material, so we want to be careful, again, for fracturing in the same way that we were with the pultruded tube. So we're going to make that incision, light incision, all the way around the outside of the tube where we've marked it off with the masking tape. So being careful to cut through all of the fibres, all of the reinforcement on the outside of the tube, just a very shallow cut. And then when we've done that, uh, we're going to cut down through the material, through the tube itself. So again, we're using a metal cutting blade in a hacksaw, just cutting it by hand, and as you can see, with no special tools, no special equipment, uh, but just following this good, good practice, we can make a very nice job of cutting through. So just being careful, cut off that material that's holding it at the top. And as you can see, the uh, cut edge very nice and smooth with no fracturing at all. Now that we've got the first cutting operation done on these various uh, samples of carbon fibre material, it's time to finish the edges um, by rubbing them back with an abrasive block so that we can get the, uh, the final contours. In the case of the parts where we were using cutting equipment like the jigsaw blade with the wood cutting blade where the, uh, it's chipped and fractured at the laminate which we anticipated, we've got a reasonable amount of, of rubbing back to do on those edges. Now we can do that either using something like a permagrip block uh, or another form of sanding block or we can just make a basic sanding block by wrapping some abrasive paper around a piece of foam or wood. Now sanding these cut edges is going to be another dust generating operation so on with the respirator or dust mask. Starting off now using a permagrip block this would be our favoured way of uh, finishing edges. The block has two sides, a coarse side and a fine side. So we'll start off using the coarse side of the block and very quickly we can rub back the edge even on this solid 2 mil prepreg sheet. Flip the block over and use the fine side just to finish that edge and leave that really quite nice and smooth. So uh, we've just rubbed back 
both of those edges on this part that were cut using the hacksaw and uh, so in uh, no time at all there as they should be. So we'll look next at the foam core panel that we cut using the various different jigsaw blades where we got quite a lot of chipping. So using a permagrip block again, starting with the coarse side and then turning the block over and using the fine side makes incredibly light work of finishing an edge like this even there where we had quite a bit of chipping. Now of course if you don't have a permagrip block don't worry you can make a perfectly good sanding block by wrapping a piece of abrasive paper in this case we're using a 120 grit around a piece of foam or wood and that will leave the carbon fiber sheet with a nice smooth finish as well. So sticking now with the 2mm prepreg sheet but returning to take a look at this detail on the inside of this part that we're making something like a permagrit square file like this is absolutely fantastic for getting into these detailed areas particularly into corners and things but there's also a range of alternatives including flat files such as this or traditional files designed for metalworking would also be appropriate but will cut a lot slower than a permagrit file. So you can see that the permagrit sanding block on uh, contoured edges like this trim part makes very quick work of radiusing these edges and then with the flat edges and the corner radiuses out of the way we just go around the whole perimeter of the part using some rolled up 120 grit wet and dry paper. For this area where we've got the slot we're going to use a flat file again like we used earlier. This will allow us to keep the edge flat rather than introducing any wobble while we rub it back. And then just using the square file up in the corner allows us to get into that difficult to hard to reach section. And finally, again, just using some rolled up wet and dry like we've done earlier allows us to put a very final finish onto this seat post that we cut back earlier. The 120 grit paper that we've been using to finish all of these edges has left them all with a really nice smooth finish. If you do need an even finer finish, for example if you want to polish the edges up to a gloss, then you can do so by using a 240 and a 400 finer grit papers. The final consideration for our cut carbon fibre parts is whether or not we need any protection for the cut edges. Nine times out of ten, we would leave an edge exactly as it is, and for most applications, that will be perfectly fine. However, in harsh environments, such as a marine environment, then we might want to protect the edges against water ingress. Now, one way to do this would be to lacquer the finished parts, in which case the lacquer will coat the edges and seal them. But as an alternative, you may wish to use some epoxy resin around the edge to seal the cut edge. So, we've mixed up just a tiny batch of epoxy, because there really isn't much that's going to be required. You could use just about any two-part epoxy laminating resin for this edge sealing, but particularly any resins described as epoxy coating resins would be very suitable because they'll always cure with a nice clean hard finish. So just using a lint-free wipe to wipe it carefully around the edge of this part, leaving it with a glossy smooth sealed edge. I hope you've enjoyed this Easy Composites guide to cutting and finishing carbon fibre sheet and carbon fibre parts. The important things to remember are that with some basic safety precautions, cutting carbon fibre can be perfectly safe, and that secondly, you don't really need any particularly specialist tools or equipment in order to achieve a good finish. Some of the equipment that you have seen, like the Permagrit tools, are available on our website, and we also have an excellent range of carbon fibre sheet, angle, and section, so if you do fancy having a go at your own carbon fibre project, do check us out. <laughs>